Okay, so the last question in Relationship Month this August comes from Marie and she asks, how do you introduce a potential partner about the idea of being intimate without the agenda of orgasm? Do men need retraining of their brain to change their sexual attitude in order to avoid being idiots in bed? <laughs> okay, well, let's just go back a few steps here because some people may be listening to this and not be aware of um, the importance or the necessity to have an agenda that is away from orgasm. The reason why this question is being asked, of course, is because there is research coming out now that is suggesting that um, orgasm triggers a part of our brain and a program, an ancient program in our brain, um, that triggers a, a mating program. That's although very, very good for our genes, is not very good for our intimacy. So therefore what happens is this, as soon as we have an orgasm, this is either men or women, we suddenly have a, a, a spike of dopamine. In other words, dopamine, that neurochemical that's often associated with addiction, gets released into the brain. And we feel great, of course. But often over, uh, like it could be hours or it could even be a couple of days, there's a, a, a crash that occurs. The dopamine just drops suddenly. And it doesn't just drop to the level of where it was before. It actually drops far, more, far below that level. And then it actually stays imbalanced below that level for up to two weeks. It's called a, like an orgasmic hangover. Now here's the interesting thing. A lot of people would go, well, I haven't noticed this. Well, that's because often people, when they're feeling this crash in dopamine, there's this unsettled feeling. There's a sense that something quite isn't right. But it's never something that isn't right with them. It's always something that isn't right with their partner or their world or with life or with the government or, you know, suddenly they feel like there's not, there's something not quite right in life generally. They just feel hungry and a bit needy and a bit, um, not hungry literally, I mean hungry as in, well it could be literally, but I mean it's a hunger that is, they need another fix, whether it comes from eating, whether it comes from working excessively, whether it comes from having another orgasm. Um, that, that, that imbalance, that low dopamine state, is consistently causing people to become greedy, defensive, and irritable. And if you're in a relationship, it's usually projected onto the other. So if you're a man, you may feel like really irritable about everything that your partner does, and you kind of crave release from it. You just want to kind of like have space from your relationship. Whereas women can get a little bit grabby and needy and a little bit emotionally hypersensitive. That is, they lose the balance of their emotional center in, the, in those periods of um, orgasmic hangover. And because usually they have an orgasm, usually more than once every two weeks, it stays perpetually like that. And then they start thinking something's wrong with the relationship. When there's never something wrong with the relationship, it's not the relationship that's wrong, it's just the fact that you're triggering a mating program um, that is very, very old. Now, why does a program like that exist? Well, you gotta remember, uh, that part of the brain wants us to have sex, deliver our seed, and get the hell out from the masculine's point of view, it wants to actually separate itself after orgasm. Why? Because then it can make itself available for other partners, which then allows you to then spread your seed further. It offers genetic diversity and better immuno responses. In other words, the more variety there is in our genes, the better those genes are able to defend against disease. Therefore, it improves our immune system and therefore our chances of survival, the more promiscuous we are. So we have a deep non-monogamous program but we also have another program in us that is in fact highly attract, in other words, we have another program that is in fact encouraging bonding and monogamous pairing. We're one of the only mammals that are pair um, givers. Therefore we, we actually come together and we function very well as couples. So I'm not, I'm not saying that we should all be monogamous. I'm just saying that if you activate one program, you're going to always have either promis promiscuous uh, thoughts um, or you're going to get very going down an addictive pathway. And there's another program which allows you to come into harmony with each other and come into, into really powerful intimacy. And so this question is coming from that place of, well, if I want, if one of the partners wants to explore this new way of coming together and in intimacy where we, the, that sex isn't about the goal-orientated orgasm, but is in fact about developing this open heart and coming into deep love, um, how do I convince a partner who may be fixated on the idea that, well, sex is about the goal orientation of orgasm? How do you convince a partner to go on this journey with you, in other words? 
Well, you know, with, with, with men, you've got to understand that a lot of men, and, and women as well, of course, are actually addicted to orgasm. Now, they would never admit this, because most people who have an addiction don't even know they have an addiction. Um, but the consequences are very, very subtle as well. Remember, every time the subconscious doesn't feel at ease, it never feels dis-ease within itself, it always projects. In other words, you know when you are not doing great, when you start seeing the world is not quite okay. All projection is a disease within self. Anything that you see outside of yourself that isn't at peace with you is a projection of an unhealed part of you projecting outward. Um, which is a fascinating, we can't, we're not going to go there right now, but that's, that in itself is a fascinating concept. So, how do you convince a man, well, as I said, it's not, it's not as simple as just asking him, telling him, oh yeah, let's try this, because if he's emotionally hooked to this need to release, because remember, that's how a lot of sex actually ends up. For, for men, it becomes a mechanical um, kind of process where it's about the release, or it's about the chase, it's about getting a woman into bed, and then, then after that, it, it kind of the polarity and everything just loses its charge. Uh, because the addiction isn't in the intimacy, it's in the release, it's in the achievement, it's in the victory of that experience, and that gives a certain dopamine high that that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for an open-hearted exchange of energy, they're looking for that dopamine spike, boom! Which, by the way, when they've done the research, it's as powerful as heroin. I mean, don't underestimate the power of these neurochemicals flooding through your brain. It is powerful. If this was easy, everyone would just give it a try and they'd see the benefits instantly. So, with men, what you need to do is you need to show them the benefits. Because unless you show them there's a potential for something much better than what they're currently experiencing, and then they can see, okay, I'm going to experience some hardship, there's going to be some withdrawal. And by the way, the withdrawal is huge. I mean, I've gone through this myself. We're not talking about, oh, I just miss it. Withdrawals, shakes hallucinations. I mean, uh, it's crazy. When, 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 when men go through orgasm withdrawal, um, it can be very, very intense. And by the way, a lot of men say, well, I've, I've removed myself from orgasm and I've never had any issue with it. But then they often replace that with something else, whether it be sugar, whether it be something working excessively, or whether it be watching TV, or alcohol, or drugs. Or We're talking about as you remove dopamine, and you begin to balance that, it's a very, very scary time period, whether it's for men or for women. It, it's not easy, it needs a, a lot of support and a lot of inspiration to keep going through that period. Once you're through that period though, I've had some incredible experiences, my heart opened in a way that I had no idea. And that's the thing, um, when, when I talk to men about this, I, I go to the fact that I, I'd say to them, listen, you don't even know what you're missing from this. So of course you're just continuing to do this, do it this way uh, because you don't know that there's a potential beyond you and you won't know the benefits of that potential for maybe months down the line. But continuous conventional intimacy, as it's often expressed, um, damages intimacy, it damages your relationships. It is very bad for our health. We lose our balance. We're feeling depleted. We don't feel we have a lot of energy to give to the world. We're not connected to our intuition. We're not able to fully find our own direction and live our purpose and live it fearlessly and connect to our juice. I mean, these are all important things to men. So you've got to ask your man and say, how important is it that you feel fully in your health? How important is it that you, are, um, that you know your direction and you're living your purpose and that you can open your heart and therefore open yourself to abundance, to success, to vitality, to enjoyment, to more freedom? Because every time you need an orgasm, you're in that moment imprisoned and, and, in and, 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 and controlled by a force outside of yourself. You're giving your power away to the need of that mating program built into your hind brain. So, I don't have a direct answer that would instantly convince a man. I hope what I've shared with you um, inspires you to give it a go though. Um, but to be honest, Marie, Men come into this when they're ready. Show them this video. If he says, oh, this is ridiculous and silly, you know it's not his time. You then have a choice to just accept that and be with that, or you find somebody who actually does want to play and is willing to look at this and take this seriously and give it a go. 
there's nothing to lose and there's absolutely everything to gain. So with that, I will close this month's relationship question month um, to this wonderful question. Thank you, Marie. And if you've enjoyed this, please leave a comment below. Please share this with your friends through Twitter and Facebook. And if you enjoyed this and you want to take part in our courses and our events, which we go into this with far more detail and we share and go through the process, both for men and women, singles or couples, just go to loverelationshipsandyou.com. Thanks for your questions. And if I didn't get to your question this time, don't worry, I'm going to keep them all. I'm going to make sure that I attend to those questions as part of a new program that I'm going to be creating. I'll make sure that I address them all in there. So with that, take good care of yourself and I will speak to you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.